Hi, this is Millie Kay, and it's Wednesday, August 2nd, 2017. And the subject of this video is going to be, are the gates safe at the Oroville Main Spillway? And what are trunnions and tendons? And the photo we're looking at here is a DWR photo showing the eight gates of the, uh, the headwork structure at the Oroville main flood control spillway and each gate is 33 and a half feet high and 17 feet 7 inches wide and they're controlled by radial gates called tainter gates which is named after the guy who invented them and the gates are hoisted using electric motors and I'm not sure how much the gates weigh for sure but I know that just downstream at the diversion dam, their gates are a little shorter but wider and they weigh 24 tons each. So I'll make this a little bit bigger so that you can see above those uh, gates is uh, various decks. There's a hoist deck and a trunnion deck. I'll talk about that later. And to show you how the gates look, this is a diagram of a tainter gate, and you can see that it's basically like an assembly uh, here uh, that has horizontal girders, and there's an end frame which has uh, this, like there's struts that converge in a trunnion joint, and a trunnion joint allows them to uh, pivot. It's a pivot joint. And there's one of those on each end forming the, the what I call the arms. And this is the skin plate that goes over the front. And these gates operate in like a, like a semicircle. So they go um, up and down. The weight, their actual weight helps them to go down and the best way to see these uh, all the parts of them is this uh, US Army Corps of Engineers video showing them installing one of these gates at Folsom Dam and it's a time-lapse video and I'll start it right now So, um, let me turn that off. That gives you all the parts of the radio gate. And this is the trunnion deck at the Oroville Dam. And this photo is from one of the inspection reports that was done by the Division of Safety of Dams in 2014 and the DSOD is a division of the Department of Water Resources and you can see here 
the the arms of this gate and then the the trunnion joint is here and since you can't just stick a pin through a trunnion into a hunk of concrete uh, what they do is they anchor this whole assembly using uh, rods and they put the rods through the concrete and each gate has 48 rods there's 24 for each one of these arms and so that's how they they anchor them and the concrete right here is five feet wide these piers are five feet wide and what they said in their comments the inspectors said the trunnion deck is shown in this view looking right the deck area was recently cleaned nothing unusual was observed the board members are concerned that the trunnion anchors are reaching their service life. Recommendations concerning this issue are expected. And that was 2014. And then in 2016, uh, in August, I want to show you the 14-foot uh, the crack that's become uh, in the news a lot. Uh, this view is looking upstream within the flood control outlet structure. Gate 8 is at left. Spalling at the left bridge bent remains dormant as evidenced by the unbroken paint at the far right. The same is true of the opposite abutment. The marked crack arrow right here has extended downward to the lift line over a long period of time. It will likely stop at this location. If not, the conditions should be evalu evaluated. So that was 2016 Department of Safety of Dams inspection. And I won't go too deeply into that because Professor B and Tony Johnson have already done that in their 124 page report that is becoming uh, very newsworthy. And I'll remind you of who Professor B is. Robert B. is a retired professor of civil engineering at UC Berkeley. He's co-founder of the University University's Center for Catastrophic Risk Management. He has been asked to investigate high-profile engineering failures such as Space Shuttle Columbia, the levee failure in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina, and the Deepwater Horizon oil rig disaster in the Gulf of Mexico. So he and uh, Tony Johnson uh, have prepared that report and I'll reference it in the description box for this video and for now I just want to go through a couple of pages of what they what they have noted each one of these red dots represents one of those uh, anchor rods uh, a tendon they're called tendons and they've made note that um, 16 of the tendons have one 32nd of an inch crack and that's considered significant and they're not replaced and 12 of them have one 16th inch cracks and those are between significant and failure designations and those have not been replaced and two of them have one 8th inch cracks and that's rod failure size, uh, so two of them have failed. And they note down here the 14 foot crack with four inch shift in Headworks concrete is still growing. And up here, 50 year old steel anchor tendons, two failed, 28 more with cracks, threat to spillway failure. And then down here at the bottom, 28 anchor tendons in radial gates have cracks considered significant per 2000 report. Cracks noted in one or more steel rod tendons in all eight radial gates. Two steel tendons have failed. DWR board concerned over nearing end of their useful life. 50 year old tendons, 90% of 40 foot tendon rod untestable and cracks may be unseen, thus uncertain by ultrasound testing. So they can't get at them that easily. And then they may comment on the 14 foot crack. 
The near 14 foot crack has shifted a seam close to four inches in offset in a five foot thick solid concrete pier. This crack is growing. Inspectors monitor the crack growth with red paint. Crack is just above a ray of anchor tendons for radial gate eight trunnion anchor. Further cracking may threaten tendons. And it, they say down here that the new crack growth extends downward towards anchor tendons embedded in concrete pier. New growth below red arrow close to two plus foot growth. So that's down here. So they're saying that it's growing. And the Army Corps of Engineers uh, has some photos here of what these anchor tendons look like when they're damaged. And this one shows, this blue arrow shows the, the origin of a fracture. And then the white arrows indicate the, uh, the way that it's going. And it says, note the area circled in green appears to have been a pre-existing crack, which is more heavily oxidized than the rest of the, the surface. And so that just gives you an idea of what, what they look like when they're in failure and here's some more photos um, that from the lab at the Army Corps and um, there's corrosion so next what I want to do is play this um, footage from a YouTube video of a DWR community meeting that was held in Yuba City in July and it was on July 24th. It was the third of this round of community meetings that were held in, uh, in July. And before I play it, I want to let you know that they had already been discussing the green spot and potential seepage uh, on the face of the dam. And this video of mine is not covering that. So I'm really focused on just on the, uh, the issue about the gates. But that's what they're referring to in some of this interaction that, that this gentleman from the public has with the WR. And um, that Sacramento Bee article and the 124-page report does put some red flags up for people. It does precipitate us to step back and think a little bit about what's going on both in the past and the mistakes that were made, as well as what might be happening going forward. I have to say, when I heard you say wild assumptions, I'm really sorry that that's the thought, that the 124-page report by it seems like some really smart people is already being biased. And I do hope that this report is considered more seriously by the review committee and such. So 20 years from now, we're not here because a spillway was damaged and catastrophically failed, but the dam is down. There is a 14-foot crack that he talks about, and that DWR has done, looks at that crack and it's up on the gates, and my question is, are the gates safe? Thank you. I think that we've addressed this question now uh, three times. Uh, the gates are safe. Uh, I don't think that was a fair interpretation of what Dave Gutierrez was saying when he said that the idea that there was a leak in the dam uh, was causing these green spots or that there is a leak in the dam because that would be meaning that there would be a significant amount of water and also it would mean that the green spots wouldn't have been there before there was water behind the reservoir. So that was, I believe, Dave's point. As I said previously, the report has been passed along the forensics team. If there's anything in there that is relevant that can add to their uh, their research and their study on that, I'm sure they will take it seriously. They are completely independent of us, um, and they will 
take a look at the report and make sure that they're taking anything in that report that is different than what they've been finding into consideration. Okay. Before I conclude this video, I want to show you a picture of the broken gate at Folsom Dam. Uh, they had a, a failure of one of these tainter gates in 1995, and it resulted in the emptying of the reservoir of about 400,000 acre feet of water. And the reservoir itself is a little under a million acre feet, so it was about 40% of the reservoir when this gate broke. And Folsom is about 75 miles south of Oroville, and Oroville is more than three times larger. Uh, its reservoir is more than three times larger than the Folsom Reservoir. And the picture pretty well speaks for itself. I did learn when I was looking up information about these gates that uh, one thing is when they fail, they fail very, very quickly in a matter of just a few seconds. So... Uh, I just want to let you know also that the purpose of this video is to give, uh, provide awareness and information for the community. And I do plan to keep the uh, description box updated when I find more information about the safety of the gates. And I really appreciate your view. I hope that you will like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you next time.